Would you turn in your gospel to John chapter 1? Oh, praise God, the Lamb forever. I so appreciate the, the spirit that we feel in here. And this morning I was praying, oh, God, save somebody this morning. It's wonderful. We are thrilled anew at the realization of what he's done for us. But I'm telling you the most wonderful thing that would cap this service if somebody would realize it that's not saved, realize that He's their Savior too. Hallelujah. Well, glory to God. I want to read three verses from John chapter 1, not necessarily in order. John 1, 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. It might as well, might as well have been written, Jesus is God. And then in verse 14, and the Word was made flesh and dwelt amongst us, and we beheld His glory as the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. We're, we're kind of beholding that this morning, aren't we? The glory, full of grace and truth. I want you to notice in verse 14, and in fact, I'm going to read the next verse in a moment and come back to this, but it says, and the Word was made flesh. Verse 12. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. What I want to call your attention to, look at verse 12 here. You see, to become. He gave them power to become. Now go back to verse 14. When it says there, and the Word was made flesh. It's been translated with different English words, but the original word was the same. The Word became flesh, and to as many as believed on Him, to them gave He power to become the sons of God. Let me put it this way. He became flesh that we might become the children of God. Oh, I, I don't need to preach. There it is. I said, He became flesh that we might become the sons of God. I want to preach this morning. He became that we might become. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. He became that we might become. Glory to God. Oh, I'm telling you, there's hope for a lost world. They don't have to stay the way they are. You don't have to stay the way you are. You can't just say, it's just me. This is the way it is. And I'm lost and I'm in darkness. And my life's a wreck. My life's a ruin. No, no. He became that you might become something other than what you are and where you're at. Amen. Amen. That's prayer over the sermon. Could we just praise Him again? Could you just thank Him for what you've already heard? Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. Move in this place. Lord, save somebody this morning. Lord, bring somebody back that's drifting, sliding away from You. Help them to feel Your presence, Lord. Feel the reality of the truth of this Gospel. Oh, hallelujah. In Jesus' name, amen. You can be seated. You may have seen the story at different places. I know that it went viral on Facebook, but it was a story about a mega church pastor, Jeremiah Stepik. And the story is told that Jeremiah Stepik, on the very day he was going to be inaugurated as pastor of this mega church, he dressed up as a homeless man and came in incognito and sat down on the back, in the back of that mega church sanctuary. And noted how nobody shook his hand, nobody talked with him, nobody dealt with him. And then it came time, the board introduced their new pastor. And he walked up there as this homeless man. And then he kind of just rebuked them in a sermon about having not acted like Jesus acted. Did anyone see this? It went viral. Did anyone see this? There's only one problem with it. It's, it's not true. There's not a Jeremiah Stepik. However, it probably was originated from a story that is true. In Tennessee, a pastor of a large church 
in the very week he became pastor, he dressed as a homeless person and went down into the streets of his city to see what the needs of the homeless were so that he might and the church might minister to their needs. That is true. And it's as admirable to me. And by the way, this really is a picture of a homeless person. It's not Jeremiah Stepik, but it's a homeless person. Now, I got to think about that. You know, all through history and literature, we've been, we've been pleased with stories with that theme. The prince and the pauper, different. How, how many remembers the stories you read how the king or, or the boss or, or the owner of a corporation, the king, he would put on the clothes of a peasant and go throughout his land. We like those stories. There's only one thing wrong with those stories. In each case, as noble as it might have been, the king was only acting like a peasant. He didn't really become a peasant. He acted like one. To really become a peasant, he would have had to abdicate the throne, had his titles taken away, burn his robes, give away his fortune. So in each of these cases, we like the story, but he's only acting. He never became. I want to tell you something. When our God came to us, he did not just come and act like a man. He became a man. Isn't that a wondrous thing to think? I'm not going to give it to you. Amen. But this week it was my assignment to preach on the incarnation of Christ. Jesus incarnate coming in the flesh and I was thrilled all over again what a marvelous thought that God became human the word was made flesh I'm not going in that again I want to give you three quick things that I shared God became flesh so we could be redeemed Aren't you glad for why is it? Amen. Sister Rebecca read it. Amen. Man had sinned, so man had to pay the price of sin. But God can't bleed. He's got to, it's got to be a man. And so God became a man so he could bleed because without the shedding of blood, there is no redemption. Amen. The Word became flesh. God became man for our redemption. Secondly, God became a man for revelation, to reveal who God is. We couldn't go to to God, He came to us. No man has seen God at any time, but the only begotten Son, which was in the bosom of the Father, He hath declared Him. Jesus said, when you have seen me, you have seen the Father. I'm telling you, He, the God, became man to reveal God to us. Did you know Jesus, the man, was the face of God that humans had never seen? I said, Jesus was the face of God that humans could never see. Amen. See, God became man to redeem us. God became man to reveal himself to us. And God became man to become our very relation. Yes, sir. We're related to him. He took not on him the form of angels, but he took on him the seed of Abraham that he might be made like unto his brethren. Why? He took upon him flesh and blood. Why? So he could know how what we feel. He could experience what we experience. So he could be touched with the feelings of our infirmity. Can I tell you this? He became man. He stayed God, but he became man. But can I tell you, he's still a man. I said he's still a man. There's one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Wonder of wonders. But I cannot dwell on those things this morning. He came to redeem us. He came to reveal God to us. He came to be our relation. The thing I want to focus on this morning. He became that we might become. He became flesh that we might become spiritual sons of God. I want you to think of this. The Son of God became a Son of Man so that the sons of men could become the sons of God. I said He became that we might become. Let me say it one more time. I said the Son of God became the Son of Man that the Son of men might become the sons of God. Anybody here have have you become a child of God? You became because He became. 
I pointed out in verse 14, the Word was made flesh. He became flesh. Verse 12, that we might become the sons of God. Amen. Look at this in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Because the epistle writers, they pick up this theme. Look what Paul says. For he hath made him to be, or to become sin for us, to become the sin offering for us, who knew no sin. Make no mistake, on the cross, Jesus wasn't bearing not a one of his sins because he never committed a sin. On the cross, he bore our sins. But it goes beyond that. He literally became the sacrificial animal. He literally became the sacrifice, the Passover lamb that bore our sins, the guilt and the condemnation and the shame and the penalty and the sentence of our sin. He became sin. And why? Why? Do you see it? You've already read it. He became the sin offering that we might become or be made the righteousness of God in Him. On the cross, He became the most filthy of sin so we could become in the sight of God righteous and pure and acceptable to Him. He became that we might become. Paul said in 2 Corinthians chapter 8, For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes, here it is, he became poor, that ye through his poverty might be or become rich. He became poor, that we could become rich. Oh, hallelujah. Can you think of all that he became, that we might become what we are? I think as a father, I was trying to imagine the heavenly father. Right before the conception of Jesus in the womb of Mary. And I thought of the times that I as a father, four times and twice with sons. But I thought of the time that I held my son in my arms. Having no idea what he would become in life. I can see it now, but when they're babies, you have no idea what they're going to become. You wonder about that. As a proud father, you're thinking of all the potential, the things they could become. But when you hold a baby in your arms, your child, you never ever know what they will become when they're grown. It cannot be formed in your minds. Amen. And then I begin to think of the Heavenly Father. He looked at His Son and knew what His Son would become. He knew His Son would become a human embryo, a human baby. Think of that. Marvel about that. With God, it was just the opposite. You know, it's one thing to be a baby and become something. It's another thing to be something and become a baby. With the Father, it was just the opposite. He saw all that His Son was and knew He'd become a baby. With us, we look at a baby and imagine what that Son would become. And here's the sad thing. I'm not trying to be unpleasant, but I must make this point. The sad thing is what some babies do become. You hold a baby in your arms. They're so innocent, so full of potential. Every possibility is before them. And then they grow up to be sinful and cruel and selfish and despicable and do awful things and treat people awfully. I've seen that with folks associated to me. I've seen babies and children with so much potential. And because this gets out, I'm not going to name who it was, but someone close to me. As a child, I've never seen such an intelligent child. I mean, at a very early age, way before school, several years before school, and just a matter of moments, I taught that child multiplication tables, just brilliant, just brilliant, and today he has become a drug addict, someone that would steal from his own parents. When you hold a baby, you never know what they will become. Amen. It's an awful thing, and so I want to preach to those and any that might hear this. Jesus
Jesus didn't become a baby. Jesus didn't become human. Jesus didn't become a sacrifice nailed to the cross so you could become a mess and a wreck. He didn't become a baby for you to become that. Jesus didn't become a baby. He didn't become a human. He didn't become a sacrifice so you could become depressed and disheartened and hopeless and suicidal. Did you hear me? I said Jesus didn't become a human so you could become suicidal. Jesus didn't become a baby so you could become addicted to drugs, addicted to alcohol, addicted to pornography, living in awful bondage and slavery of sin. Jesus didn't become a human so you could become like an animal only interested in your own base desires and fulfilling the flesh. Jesus didn't become a sacrifice so you could become a rebel against the truth, a rebel against righteousness, a rebel against holy living. Jesus didn't become a baby so you could become a failure in a life, an accident that has happened. Jesus didn't become a human so you could become one with a victim attitude because you've been betrayed and hurt and abandoned. Jesus didn't become a sacrifice so you could become sour and bitter and cynical. Amen. Jesus did not become a baby so you could become lost and a candidate to burn forever in hell. But Jesus became a baby. Jesus became a human. Jesus became a sacrifice so you could become a child of God. Hallelujah. Oh, let's worship Him. Hallelujah. He became that we might become. No. Jesus became a baby so you could become a son of God. He became human so you could become one that has had a life change. There's no hope like the gospel. Jesus became a sacrifice so you could become one that lives for something higher than yourself, bigger than yourself, so you could become one that makes a difference in life. Jesus became a human so you could be one that knows life and purpose. Jesus became a sacrifice so you could become one that will live forever throughout eternity in the pleasures of the presence of God. I said Jesus became a baby to make you a member of His family. Hallelujah. He became that we might become. I'm not attempting to be negative but preach reality this morning. And I want you to know everyone in the house, I've been yelling a bit, but just listen. Not only does God have something in mind for each human to become, But Satan has something in mind for every human to become. And even those that think that they're just doing their own thing, let me make clear, we'll either become what God wants us to become or we'll become what Satan wants us to become. It's that clear. Satan is desiring and planning and putting forth the effort to get you and me to become something as well. I'm telling you what Satan's plan is. He wants you to become a failure. I'm not just talking about in the eyes of men, but I'm talking about in your own eyes and in the eyes of God to be a failure. Satan wants you, he's got a plan for you to become an unbeliever. You might have heard the truth, known the truth, but it's Satan, he desires to make you a cynic and a skeptic to accommodate the own, your own way you want to live. He wants to make you a rebel against the truth. I mean, I'll tell you, if you know the Lord this morning, Satan has a plan that you become a backslider, that you become away from God. Even Satan wants you to become a darkness dweller. Did you hear me? Amen. I've seen children raised in light that knew the light. And they become someone that dwells in darkness. Amen. Satan wants you to become an alcoholic, a drug addict, a host of sexual diseases, a pornography addict. That's what Satan wants you to become. Amen. Satan wants you to become, if you're a young teen lady, he wants you to become a teenage, unwed mother. Amen. Satan wants you to become depressed, discouraged 
suicidal. Satan wants you to become one headed straight to hell. Satan wants you to become one hopeless wreck in life. Here's just a few pictures. You've been seeing them. This is only 2.5 years later of taking meth. Amen. This is what this lady was. This is what Satan wanted her to become right here. He has that vision in his mind for every young person, every person in this building. Amen. Satan sees who you are and he's got something in mind he wants you to become and it's not pretty. But I'm going to tell you something else. You may be right here. Amen. And God sees you right. But God also sees what you can become washed in the blood, regenerated by the Spirit, the light of the gospel in your heart. Amen. God may see you right here. You may be like this. You may have become this. But God sees that you could become a child of God. Oh, let's worship Him. Come on, He's in this place. Let's give Him honor. He's the one that makes the change. We can't make the change. He makes the change. Faith in Him. God saw what we would become without Him. So He became us that we might not become that thing we would be without Him. I want you to think about that. I hadn't planned on pausing for this. However bad your life was before you met Christ, I want you to ask yourself this question right here if you know Him. If you're a child of God, what would you have become had it not been for God? Think about it across the building. Make it personal. I was rejoicing this week thinking of Ryan and how God saved him. I'm not meaning to be personal, but what would you be right now if it hadn't been for God? It puts Christmas in a whole nother life. He became one of us that we might not become what God knew we would become without him. Oh, glory to God. I'm talking about the power of the God. Come on, let's just praise Him again, could we? I want you to think about that question. What would I have become without God? Come on, think about it right now. What would I have become without God? Oh, it makes you want to shout. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm, go- I'm just about done, but I-, I want to enunciate these points. Amen. Jesus, the Word, became human. So we could become what we couldn't become without Him. What we couldn't become. I want it to be clear this morning. No human, no person can save themselves. On your own, you could never make it to heaven. You could never be righteous. You could never be accepted by God. You could never be born again. You could never be a changed individual. And so Jesus came as a human so we could become what we could never become without Him. Amen. Jesus became a human so we could become what we didn't think we could become. I'll always be trapped in the environment I was born in. I'll always be a part of the crowd I ran with. I can't I run with. I can't be anything else. I can't change. My life can't be different. I'm telling you, he became human so we could become what we think we couldn't become. <laughs> Hallelujah. He became human so we could become at times even when what we didn't want to become. I've seen folks say, I want to live the way of the world. I don't want to be a Christian. I don't want any of that religion stuff. I don't want... Oh, but God began to get a hold of him. God began to show Jesus to him. They never wanted to be that way. I don't want to be one of those religious fanatics. I don't want to be one of those followers of Christ. Oh, but Jesus came to become what folks didn't even want to become. And listen, I want to tell you, you may be sitting here and say, I want none of that. I don't want to become a Christian. But I want to tell you, whether you want to become a Christian or not doesn't change the fact that he became human so you could become a Christian. So you could be. You may say, I don't want any of that saved stuff. That does not change it one iota. That he came. He became flesh so you could become a recipient of grace and mercy. I want you to ask a question across the building. What am I becoming? What have I become? What would God, why did Jesus come? Why did Jesus become flesh? For what? 
is it that he wants me to become? You see, because of what he became, it's never too late. Whatever in sin and in darkness you have become, wherever you find yourself this morning, it's not too late. Because he became human, you can yet, I'm putting that word yet, you can still become a son, a child, a daughter of God. So hear me this morning. You don't have to remain a failure. You can become a victor in Christ. You don't have to continue to live in misery and selfishness. You can live in the joy. You can become one that lives with joy unspeakable and full of glory. You don't have to remain a rebel against God. You can become one that bows his knee and become one of the most faithful, obedient subjects and followers of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. You may have become hopeless, but I'm telling you, it's not too late because he became flesh. You can become hopeful. Hallelujah. Music, would you come? I don't know if it's yet on the cover, but Time Magazine has announced its 2014 Person of the Year. As we know, in recent years, sometimes that's a group of people. How many recognizes their Person of the Year, the 2014? If you can't read it out there, they have chosen the Ebola fighters. The Ebola fighters. And that's noble of them to do so. But I want to share just one quote in the justification for choosing the Ebola fighters as the person, time, person of the year, 2014. I want you just to hear this quote. Anyone willing to treat Ebola victims ran the risk of becoming one. Anyone that treated Ebola victims ran the risk of becoming one. We had something worse than Ebola. We had sin. And Jesus, the one that treats that, he not only ran the risk of becoming a sin victim, he became a sin victim to treat us from the awfulness of sin. How many can say his treatment works? The Ebola fighters, they went right into the affected areas knowing they could catch it. Jesus waded right into humanity knowing he'd be abused and betrayed and beaten and hung on a cross and bear the awful sins of many. But Jesus became flesh. The Ebola fighters, they knew if they caught it, it would be a death sentence, very possibly. Jesus knew if he became human, it was a death sentence. Because he came to die. He came to be the sacrificial lamb. And so to say it all, right where we started, the Word became flesh that we might become the children of God. Children of God. What a gospel. Please hear me. It doesn't matter what you've become. If you come to Christ, there's something else you can become. You can become saved. Oh, come on. You can have a heart filthy with sin, but you can become washed, cleansed. You can be the most suicidal person filled with darkness and hopelessness, but you can become joyful, a recipient of the peace of God. Hallelujah. You say, I've never been anything but a failure in life. I was once an innocent baby, but I've become nothing but a failure. You can become one that sings with a shout, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. Oh, he sought me and he bought me. He became a man that I could become a child of God. Let's stand across the building. Could we worship him? Come on, let's just worship him. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I had no intention on dwelling on this in the altar call, but I keep being impressed. To give the appeal in terms of one of the points I felt necessary to make. That not only does God have a plan for every human to become something, something of grace. But Satan has a plan for everybody to become something. I promise you, I'm aiming at nobody when I say this. It just floated through the air and I'm grabbed hold of it. But I look at some young people and God never became flesh. So you can be a bombed out video game addict. He became flesh so even as a young person, your heart could be filled with a passion to win somebody to Christ. Hallelujah. I'm not trying to, I'm, I'm try, trying to be rough or scolding. But I'm talking to us that are saved. He didn't become flesh to sacrifice of sin so we could go around and complain how hard it is and how bad life's treated us and how somebody didn't shake our hand in church. That's not what He came flesh for for us. He became flesh so we could walk around, become somebody. It's got the joy of the Lord. God of gratitude, I'm a child of God. His royal blood now flows through my veins. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, hallelujah. If you want to be what He came for you to be, would you lift your hands and say, Lord, I want to become what you came fle- became flesh for me to become. That's what I want to become. That's what I be- want to become. Hallelujah. Oh, come on, church. Let the reality of the gospel hit you right smack in the middle of your heart. Hallelujah. 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 He became flesh that we might become the children of God. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Oh, hallelujah. That's the voice of Satan that says you've made such a mess out of your life. You've you've become so wrecked and, and destroyed and depleted. That's all you'll ever be. Maybe just in human terms. Maybe just on a horizontal plan. But I'm telling you, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, the saints shall be saved. He is mighty to save. Amen. He's taken worse wrecks than you and lifted them up out of the gutter and caused them to become, amen, people of God. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, let's give him a clap offering this morning. Hallelujah. He hath done great things. He hath done great things. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. You're here this morning. You've let Satan make you something, but now you want to become what God would make you. If that's you this morning, you want to just come and bring your life lay it right here on these steps we use as an altar and say Lord I'm confessing I'm admitting the mess I've made of my life the mess I allowed Satan to make out of my life but Lord I'm going to bring it to you I'm ready to become what you'd have me become if that's you if that's you you want to become what God wants you to become would you come begin to fill these altars and say I want to become what God wants me to become amen would you come you need him you need the Lord. Amen. You need the Lord. Would you become? Amen. Satan has a plan to utterly destroy. Amen. Utterly destroy. It doesn't have to be that way. Amen. He became the Son of Man. That you could become the child of God. Hallelujah. Amen. You want to become what the Lord would have you become. Are you here this morning? Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many was able to envision just a little bit what you would have become without God? Did, did you, were you able to envision that a little bit? If you're here this morning, you're so thankful that because of Him, you didn't become that, but you've become what He's made you. Amen. Would you come and fill this altars and say, I just want to thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. What I've become because of what you became. Hallelujah. I want to thank you what I've become because of what you became. Hallelujah. I want to thank you what I've become because of what you became. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Thank you for what I have become because of what you became. Thank Him for His power. Thank Him for His saving power. Thank Him for His saving power. Would you surrender your life to Christ all over again? Around the front and the altar. Say, God, I don't want to become what Satan would want me to become. I want to become what God wants me to become. thank you. We thank you that you left the splendor of heaven. Became one of us. So we might become one of you, God. Hallelujah. come so you might become an alcoholic he came that you might become one that sits at his table drinks the new wine of his spirit hallelujah oh hallelujah Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you that you became flesh. 
that I could become a child of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, I'm a child of the King. His royal blood. Oh, it now flows through my Just rejoice in the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Well, praise God. Praise God. Oh, I'm a child of the King. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Sweet. 